So there's a new script that just made its way into Cyril called Verilux Hypermetric Stretch. It's another way for us to be able to stretch our data, but it's not a statistical stretch. It's not an MTF stretch. It's actually using advanced algorithms to show us absolutely every bit of signal that is in our image. Other stretching methods like MTF and statistical stretch can tend to flatten out and soften the images, overstretch the stars, causing them to bloat. This script eliminates all of those issues and you can actually stretch your image in as little as two clicks and call it done. The engine relies on three main components, photometric weighting, generalized hyperbolic stretch, and vector color preservation. With these three components together, it'll give you a complete image without you needing to hardly do any work at all on it. The developer, Ricardo Paternini, was nice enough to work with me over these past few days via email answering what I'm sure he was thinking was a lot more questions I needed to be asking, but he's very patient with me, helped me understand how it was working, what's happening under the covers, and more importantly, how to present the tool to you guys and what's the proper way to use it and some things that you shouldn't be doing as well. So Ricardo, thank you for your assistance. You're a big part of the reason why I was able to put this video together, so I appreciate your time. So let's check it out. My name is Rich and you're watching Deep Space Astro. All right, so first we need to get the script installed. So up in scripts and then get scripts. And you can either scroll through and look for the Verilux script or just start typing it in the search box. It'll pop right up for you. Make sure it's selected over on the right hand side and click apply. So we are going to start with uh, M45 here. This is a fresh stack. No processing has been done. So the Verilux hypermetric stretch, there are prereqs before you run the script, right? So, but nothing out of the norm. So we're going to start as usual with just giving our image a crop and then do a background extraction. I'm going to use City Astro's Auto BGE, but you could use Cyril's inbuilt background extraction or Graxport itself. It's up to you. It doesn't matter. Just as long as you get the gradients removed before we move into the script. I'm just going to leave the default settings here and hit process. And once background extraction is done, we'll close that. And then we're going to come up into tools, astrometry, and image plate solver. And we need to plate solve the image because our next step is to do color calibration on it. And as you know, color calibration requires that your image has been plate solved first. So I'm going to click OK. And plate solving failed, so I am just going to give it a selection to work with. Sometimes that takes care of that. Okay, we're good. So we're plate solve now and come up into image processing, color calibration, and we're going to use spectrophotometric color calibration. Now I want to talk about this a little bit. The script relies on SPCC to be as accurate as possible while it's stretching. This is what keeps our colors accurate and gives us the best possible image. You can use photometric color calibration as well. That's okay but SPCC is the preferred way of doing it. Now, time of recording, the Gaia catalogs, if I scroll back over in my console, you'll see there's a notification from the serial team saying that the Gaia archive is currently down for maintenance. So you will not be able to use SPCC along with the online catalogs. The workaround for that, and actually the preferred way of doing it, is to install the Gaia catalogs locally on your computer. That way, regardless of the status of the servers online, you have your own local copy that will always work. I'm not going to go through how to do it, but just if you're not aware, if you come up into scripts, Python scripts, and then core, and run the serial catalog installer, this is how you can download the Gaia catalogs that you require to your local hard drive. So if they're down for maintenance or any other reason online, you'll still be able to use SPCC. I'll leave a link down in the description as well as up in the corner here to a video that I have that shows you how to use this script. It's pretty straightforward, like I said, outside of the scope of this video, but I just wanted to point it out. So I have the local catalogs installed, so I'm going to go into color calibration and spectrophotometric color calibration. This was shot with my Player One Poseidon C camera, so a one-shot color camera. It has the IMX571 sensor in it, and I also used the Optolong L Pro filter while I was imaging. So all those settings are good for me. Click OK. It will now color correct the image for us. And we can close our plots here and then close SPCC. Now we're ready to stretch, and this script is what is stretching your data. So whether you were stretching previously using any of the stretches in the stretch processing menu, like the histogram transformation or the GHS stretch, this script is replacing those. 
So wherever you're stretching in your workflow, this is where you want to insert this script at. So we're going to come out of the auto stretch view and jump into linear and then scripts, Python scripts, processing, and the Verilux hypermetric stretch. So let's just talk about the interface here real quick and the settings that you can use. Um, they're, they're numbered, so zero, one, two, three, and then your final step would be to process. The processing mode, you have two to choose from, and ready to use is probably what everybody's gonna be using the most. This will get you basically a completely stretched image that, as it says, is ready to use. Scientific is going to do the same thing. It's gonna give you the same type of stretch using GHS, but it's not gonna do any of the curves adjustments like the ready to use is going to do for us. It's not gonna make any of those kinds of, any of those adjustments to give you the end result image that, we're, that you're gonna be going for. Scientific, it can be used just for that, for scientific analysis, or if you just wanna have more control over the final tone mapping of the image, then you would choose scientific as well. For the first example, we're gonna do the ready to use. Sensor calibration, again, I am using my Player One camera with the IMX 571 sensor. You can see there are other ones listed in here as well. There's also a handful of DSLR cameras that you can choose from, and both of the C-Stars, the S30 and the S50 are in here. So whichever sensor you have, that's what you wanna select. If you don't know what your sensor is, maybe you downloaded the data online someplace, or your sensor is not listed in here, then select the Rect 709, which is the default setting, and you'll be okay with that. Again, if you know the sensor, I do, IMX 571, so that's what I'm going to use. And then that moves us down in, into number two, which is our stretch calibration. Target background is your target background median. The lower the number, the more contrast and darker the image will be. The higher the number, the less contrast and brighter the image is going to be. Point two, obviously, is the default. We'll start with that and then we'll play with a couple of other settings here. Log D is the strength of the stretch. You can adjust this yourself, but then that kind of defeats the whole purpose of this script, which is to figure out what this value should be based on your background target median that you set. So if I click the auto calculate log D button, you can see my log D value has automatically been changed to 5.09 based on my background median that I selected and analysis of the image. Protect B controls how much the star's nuclei are protected during the stretch. So higher values, you'll have softer highlights and more controlled stars. Lower values, you'll be pushing more on them and risking maybe the star cores being too white. Honestly, don't think there's ever going to be a need for you to change this, but it's there if you need to. If you make a change to Protect B, for example, I'll just change it just to show you guys. If I change it to two, you can see log D is 5.09. That's what it calculated when we click the auto calculate button. If you change protect B, you wanna make sure you click auto calculate a second time and you'll see our log D number has changed based on that parameter. But we'll put that back to six, click auto calculate again, and we're good to go. The last one, the uh, star core recovery white point, this can be changed without needing to auto calculate again. So the default is recommended. Again, you can play with it, but you're probably not gonna need to change it. It normalizes the star colors towards the white as the luminance of the entire image is increasing. With that being said, we're ready to go. We've set our background median, we've auto calculated, and we're just gonna hit process. So, and there's our completed stretch. Now, if the colors look too strong for you, some people, myself included, when I first started looking at the script, felt it was oversaturating it, but the script does not touch the saturation at all. What we're seeing here is 100% all the signal that was captured by our camera sensor. What it boils down to is we're not necessarily used to seeing this much color in our image because other stretching algorithms tend to compress the data and give it a washed out look. And then we correct for that by increasing saturation, whether it's using the saturation tool up in image processing or doing a saturation stretch within GHS. So everything is preserved perfectly without clipping any of the data, without blowing off the stars. But let's do a little bit of a comparison, right? So I, I mentioned how it's, it's a more accurate way of stretching versus other methods. So I am going, let's just close the script for now and I'm gonna come up into scripts, Python scripts, utility, and use the image window script just so we can kind of save this view that we're looking at. So we have it saved here in our window. I'm just gonna minimize that for now. We'll undo the stretch that we just performed. And then let's come up into scripts, Python scripts, processing, 
and statistical stretch. We'll use the same target background median at 0 0.20. We'll make it a link stretch, normalize it, and we'll give it a little bit of a curves adjustment and then click apply. Close that and let's bring up our view that we saved in the window and we can take a side-by-side -side look at this and you can see the difference, right? I mean, at first the statistical stretch, that's what I've always been used to seeing, right? That's what I thought it, everything was supposed to be looking like. But you can see the color that's kind of been washed out, not only in the nebula of M45, but you know, down here around this star at the bottom compared to the one with HMS, the orange is still there. It, the color has not been washed out. Now, again, this may be your preferred way. You may like the statistical stretch more than you do the HMS stretch, and that's fine. But, you know, know that this is the more accurate representation of the data that you've captured. So that's our side by side. That's what we're talking about when we're looking at um, the two different types of stretches. So let's close this and I'm going to undo the statistical stretch and I'm going to reapply our original stretch from the Verilux hypermetric. So again, 571, ready to use, auto-calculate, and then process. Back to where we started with this, and I wanted to do it this way because I want to show you how to make adjustments. You may not like the point twenty default, and you want to go one way or the other and make adjustments with it. Like I said, the lower the number, the more contrast. The higher the number, the less contrast and brighter the image will be. What you need to do before you start making adjustments, you don't want to just make an adjustment here and process again because you're going to be stretching the stretch that you had previously. So come up and hit the undo button in Cyril and then make sure you click reload input and it'll reload the image that is in Cyril. If you don't do that, then your previous stretch is still going to be cached in the script and you won't get accurate results. So we're back to the beginning and I'm gonna lower this down to maybe like 0.15 because I made a change to my background median. I need to hit auto calculate again and then process. So you can see the image darkens slightly. I got a little bit more contrast in between the, the nebula and the background. But I wanted to show you before you make any further adjustments to undo your previous stretch and click reload input. We'll go this way just to show you what it looks like. Then you can make adjustments to your background, hit auto calculate, and then process again. So we're gonna undo that. We're gonna reload the input once more. Now, obviously we've been stretching this image with the stars intact, and a lot of you, myself included, like to remove the stars before processing. And you can still do that now, but you don't have to because stretching with HMS is not going to blow out your stars. And that's the reason we remove the stars because we don't want to start blowing them out because we're trying to stretch out the faint details in our image. But you still can remove the stars if you want to before running the script. So if we just come up into auto stretch and then hit star process, and remove our stars and, and the reason you may like to do this is you may want to tame the stars down so removing them first and then stretching and recombining them later still gives us the benefit of controlling the size of the stars per se right we can just stretch them in ever so slightly so we give the focus to the nebula in the background that we're trying to showcase in our image so we'll let this finish and then we'll come back and run the script against the starless image all right so stars are removed so we'll change our view mode back to linear, come up to scripts, Python scripts, processing, Verilux hypermetric stretch once more. We're gonna do the ready to use, 571 for my center, just like before. And we'll just run with the 0 0.20 for the default, hit auto calculate, process, and there is our stretched image. So, so just wanted to show you that, that you can still have your workflow where you're removing the stars and then stretch using HMS and then continue with your processing and add the stars back in later. So let's take a look at the scientific processing mode. I'm gonna close the script and we're just gonna start over and I'm going to open up my initial stack and run through what we did previously where I did the cropping and the background extraction and the photometric color calibration. So let me get this back to that state and then we'll continue on. Okay, so we're back at the start. We're gonna switch back over into linear and then we'll run the script. Like I said, we'll look at the scientific mode right now, 571 for my sensor, and we'll just leave the defaults for the example, auto calculate and then process. And close the script and as you can see it looks washed out it looks flat there's no contrast there's nothing it did the stretching for us the accurate stretching without blowing out anything keeping our colors intact so now it's up to us to apply that tone mapping right and the curves transformation is what you want to use to do that you don't want to use any of the other stretching tools because now you're getting more into that stretch that starts compressing our data and washing colors out so 
you're, you're kind of defeating the purpose if you use GHS after running the script or if you use histogram transformation after running the script. So stick to curves transformation and then just like we've done previously, just adjust your levels by setting your curves, right? So with this, I may bring up my mids a little bit and then just little iterations, right? Give it the infamous S curve to pull down our darks, pull up our brights, make adjustments to your liking and you'll notice, I mean, we're not losing any of the colors, we're not washing anything out by doing this, just adjusting our levels as we go. Obviously, you can spend a lot of time on here getting good results, but you can see all the details are starting to come out. It was, It's there. The script is just leaving it up to us to bring. That's a little too much there. Let's bring that back up. So I think you guys get the idea with that, right? So, so as you're making your curves adjustments, there is one rule that you need to follow, and that is to never touch the black or the white points in the corners here. Leave them anchored where they're at and work along this line to create your, your S curve if that's what you're working with or simply just pulling up your midtones. All this stuff is fine, but just leave the black and the white points where they live. And let's just, I'm gonna show you guys one more example, right? So this was shot with my L Pro, so we're talking about this is broadband. And this is the Crescent Nebula that I shot with the same camera but with the L Extreme filter. Just to give you guys another example using the script. So same thing, we're just gonna crop it. And you can see my flats didn't work out very well for this data, but that's okay. And again, we're gonna give it a quick background extraction, your choice of what you wanna use, and then plate solve, and then SPCC for our color calibration again. This time I'm going to tick my narrow band mode because like I said, this was used, I was using the L Extreme filter, seven nanometer bandwidth passes, click okay. So again, we're cropped, gradients were removed, background extraction, plate solved, and color corrected using SPCC. So we're gonna come out of auto stretch view, go into linear, and run the script once more. So scripts, Python scripts, processing, and Verilux hypermetric stretch. So we're gonna stick with ready to use, 571 for my sensor. With this specific set of data, since it's so heavy in HA, that bringing the background median down gave us better results. So about 0.12 looks good. We hit auto calculate, and then process, and there we go. I mean, just look at all the nebulosity just around the crescent. And this, you know, this was one of the things, you know, down here where it looks like it's oversaturated, but again, the script is not adding any saturation to the image. This is signal that exists in your data. So if it looks too colorful, I guess we would say, then you could just adjust your, your background median lower to try and tame that down a little bit. And you can decrease the saturation yourself. If you don't like the result that you got, if it is too colorful for you, you could either use the color saturation in serial to do so, working with the amount and the background factor, or take it out into Photoshop or GIMP or Affinity Photo and make some further adjustments there. But you know, this will save a lot of time, especially if you've been using the generalized hyperbolic stretch tool and kind of struggle with it. This script pretty much does that for you. And it does it for you in a way where it doesn't mute any of your colors. It doesn't clip any of your data. It gives you a ready to use image with just a couple of clicks. So super powerful script. I'm really enjoying using this one. It really helps not only improve the quality of my image, but it saves me a quite a bit of time too, versus stretching it manually in GHS, which is still, like I mentioned, it's the other stretching algorithms are still valid. Use what you want to use, what you feel gives you the best results. But this gets us super accurate. We're not losing any data, any signal in our images by utilizing this script. Ricardo is still developing it and has plans to add other features into it. So it's gonna be very actively worked on. Before you go i just want to say thanks to all my members here on youtube and i buy me a coffee i appreciate each and every one of you thanks to all of you that watch the channel share like subscribe if you have any questions at all as always leave them in the comments below i'm sure ricardo will be in there as well helping me field any of these questions once again thank you everybody for watching we'll see you in the next video and clear skies